they may reflect. Allah said about the Jews and the knowledge of the truth, the likeness of those who were entrusted with the Torah but who subsequently failed in those obligations is as the likeness of a donkey who carries huge burdens of books but understands nothing for, from them. How bad is the example of people who deny the ayah proves evidences the signs and the verses of Allah? They knew the truth from the Torah, yet they were not guided by it. They distorted its words, and if that failed to work, they distorted the meanings of the words. How could people who treated knowledge in this despicable manner ever have found happiness? It was certainly not possible in their case. For they always try to eradicate the truth using any means at their disposal. But they preferred blindness to guidance, and of their saying, our hearts are wrapped with coverings. We do not understand what the messengers say. Nay, Allah has set a seal upon their hearts because of their disbelief, so they believe not but a little. There are thousands, perhaps millions of books in the Library of Congress in Washington. There are books that deal with every century, every people, every nation and every culture. Yet who owns this venerable library? A nation that disbelieves in its Lord. A nation whose knowledge passes not to the bounds of the tangible, material world, as for what is beyond the material world, they hear not, see not, feel not, nor do they understand. And we had assigned them the faculties of hearing, seeing, and hearing, seeing, and hearts, but their hearing, seeing, and seeing, and their hearts avail them nothing. The likeness between the truth and the disbelievers' aversion to it, it, it is as follows. The water is pure and sweet, however, the person drinking it feels a bitter taste. How many clear ayat proves evidences versus lessons, signs, revelations we gave them, and never an ayat sign comes to them from the ayat proves evidences of their Lord, but that they have been turning away from it. Read more, but, but with understanding and contemplation, to be blessed with a large store of knowledge, knowledge and mind that contemplates a good understanding, and an intellect that delves beneath the surface for reasons and motives. These are all factors that contribute to giving one peace of mind. It is only those who have knowledge among his, among his slaves that fear Allah, they, they deny that the knowledge whereof they could not compass. A scholar usually has an open mind and is at peace. A thinker from the West said, I keep a large file in the drawer of my desk and on it is written foolish things I have done. I write in it all of the follies and errors that I perpetrate during the course of a day. I do this to know my faults in order to rid myself of, of them. The earlier Muslim scholars preceded him in the endeavour they would me meticulously take an account of their deeds. I, and I swear by the self-reproaching person, I a believer, the Muslim takes account of himself with more rigour than does a businessman with his partner. Would write everything that he said from, from, from one Friday to the next. If he found that he had spoken well and truthfully, he praised Allah. And if he found error in his heart, in his speech, he repented to Allah. A righteous man from the early centuries of Islam said, I committed a particular sin 40 years ago, a sin that still bothers me today. I continue to ask Allah to forgive me for it, and those who give that their charity which 
they give and also do other good deeds with their hearts full of fear whether their alms and charities have been accepted or not. Take account of yourself, keep a journey, journal with you, and in it take account of your actions. Write down the negative aspects of your personality and actions, and then th think of solutions to rid yourself of them. Although may Allah be pleased with him, said, Take account of yourselves before it is taken off of you. Weigh your deeds before they are weighed for you on the day of judgment, and beautify yourselves with good deeds for the great display on the day of judgment. Three mistakes that are common in our everyday lives, wasting time talking about masters that don't concern us, matters that are none of our business. From the goodness of one's Islam is leaving alone that which does not concern him, being preoccupied with trivial issues, listening to rumours. Predictions and gossip are three common examples. Having these characteristics results in paranoia, anxiety and a lack of purpose in life. So Allah gave them the reward of this world and the excellent reward of the hereafter. My guidance shall neither go astray nor fall into distress and misery. Plan your affairs and take proper precaution. When a Muslim sets out to do something, he must do the following. He must plan with caution. And he must put his trust in Allah, the Prophet, who was protected by Allah, and who had uh, Allah, and who had, and who had, a stronger trust in Allah than anyone else were armor in battle. Were armor in battle. A man asked the Prophet, Should I tie my camel to the post or should I put my trust in Allah? The Prophet said, Tie it up and put your trust in Allah. Then you take appropriate steps to, te to reach your goal. And when at the same, same time you put your trust in Allah, you have implemented two important principles of Islamic monotheism, to trust in Allah without taking appropriate measures, without making an effort or achieve one's goals, is a contemp contemptible misunderstanding of the, el of the religion. religion. And to take appropriate measures without trusting in Allah means that there is a defect in one's faith in, in Allah. An Arab poet said, the slow, cautious person will achieve part of his goals, while the impetuous, hasty one will often fail by being circum circumspect in your affairs. You will not have acted contrary to your belief in preordainment, but rather you will have implemented a fundamental part of it, and let him be careful.